everybody. Our guest today is Scott McKenna, who is an entrepreneur, musician, husband, uh, filmmaker, and father. He is the owner of 4LC Studios. That's 4LCstudios.com. His YouTube channel has over 1.1 million views, and he uploads vlogs, tech gear, uh, tech videos, gear reviews, business tips and advice, pretty much everything you might want to know about the business. And uh, he also has a podcast, which I saw just came out recently. That's awesome. Uh, yeah. So basically, yeah. he's everywhere. <laughs> welcome, <laughs> welcome to the show. How are you doing, Scott? Thanks. I'm doing great. Thank you. I awesome. try to be everywhere. That way, that way, wherever people actually prefer to hear it, they can be there. Yeah, that's <laughs> smart. And dude, I I have to say that must be crazy because you have a family as well. So um, the fact that you're doing all that is pretty Herculean, in my opinion. <laughs> yep, trying to just balance it and try to figure out how much I can do. I'd like to do a little bit more of everything, but I have to balance certain things. And certain times of year, easier to do other content than others, but. It's Got fun. It. It's just I like doing it. So if we could just give our listeners a little uh, background, how did you get started? What kind of um, work do you do? And you know, why did you start vlogging and all that stuff? Um, well, vlogging was just fairly recently. I mean, uh, to go back a little bit before then, I, I, I've been doing video kind of video stuff in general for the last maybe 10 years or so, just kind of as my own. I was a musician before I owned 4LC Studio, so a lot of my video stuff started by me just wanting to obviously just record what I was doing in general. Um, and then as I started to do it more, and then I kind of got out of music and kind of went more into the video side of things, I just started doing it, um, kind of realizing I liked I liked it a lot. And realized there was obviously a lot of potential to do it because like any field I think that if you take it seriously and you try to do it as well as possible there's always work and video production is obviously huge right now because video is a humongous form of of um, just content for companies all over the world and weddings and all that stuff so right. so kind of got into that started with weddings still do a lot of weddings but now making a bigger shift toward kind of 50 50 in um, commercial work and also weddings and then the YouTube content started. I basically went full time into my company in May of 2017. I had been doing it part time up to then. And right when I started doing it, it was my goal to produce as many videos as possible on YouTube. And so over the last 300 days of full time, I've tried, I think I've done 247 videos or something. Hmm. Um, and really, my, my process is more of just documenting this journey. Um, and it's been cool to see that, oddly enough, a lot of people like following along the journey and kind of realizing what I'm learning and me being able to provide value any way I can of helping other people learn in their journey is kind of the main purpose of it. Great. Yeah, dude, that's amazing. Um, so when you were first starting, what were you, where did you learn how, like what areas of knowledge did you have to put together first to get competent and good at what you're doing to the point where you could make money, you know? I mean, I think like anything, obviously, there's uh, since since me really getting into it was three to five years ago, there was obviously a lot of content even even then on mm -hmm. YouTube and online. Obviously, now it's unbelievable just the resources <laughs> people have to learn, right. which is amazing. Yeah. But video is also one of those things that it really is just about doing it. I mean, it, the best way to learn camera gear and to learn how everything works is to press every mm -hmm. button on your camera and go to every <laughs> setting on your camera and see what it does. Yeah. Like too many people want every every answer answered for them mm -hmm. rather than like you're, you're not going to break anything on a camera. Mm -hmm. Just shoot. <laughs> just yeah. shoot and edit and then do that again every single day. <laughs> it's literally the reason I tell people to vlog even if you don't want to post them because filming and editing every single day helps you learn. So I just kind of learned from doing, I've never been a person that's afraid to mess something up. So I just love doing it. And if I'm passionate about doing it, I will spend a lot of time um, practicing. <laughs> Got it. That's great. Yeah. You're not precious about it. Um, so mm -hmm. then what were your first challenges when you're starting? Like what, what areas of the business or the technical side did you have to learn so that you could be, you know, charging people <laughs> i mean i think from the the business side of it the getting the work never was a big issue for me um only for the fact that i i, I take pride in being very easy to work with with people um in general and and reaching out to people i don't mind the idea of networking with people in every way possible to get work so that part of it came really easy to me and still does um and i think that that's a huge 
asset that I do have is the fact that I know there are tons of people that are so much better than me in every aspect of video. Um, but because I'm passionate about learning and, and getting better at that, the other side of it kind of does come natural to me, which is the, the networking and the, and the work, getting the work. So, but some of the bigger challenges are more and just still challenges every day of just trying to get better, Got trying it. to look at what you did yesterday and make what you do today better, mm-hmm. which is always something that you have to work on. Yeah, it's true. So then what are some things you do specifically when you say networking or getting work? What kind of activities? How do you spend your time in that area? You know, to me, networking and specifically opening up opportunities for work is simply just having conversations with people all the time. uh, And you never know what you never know what conversation you have today that could be something that you get work for 18 months from now. So it's not that I'm going into every conversation with every single person hoping that I get a possible job from it. It's more of if you're nice to every single person you meet and talk with and you just keep in contact and you understand what they are doing, it helps you to be able to provide a solution to them if video is your thing when you do see a need arise. But right. people don't realize that like it takes a relationship first before anyone mm-hmm. pays you money for something. So the idea of just cold calling a company and saying, hey, I would love to do some video work with you. We do video work. What do you think? Uh, chances are they either are going to go with someone they know better or another reason. Mm-hmm. And so I'm just all about building relationships with every single person I meet and then just being friendly. And then as you see needs arise, then you can go in asking for some sales and they've already re- made a relationship and that part of it's easy. Right. That's true. It's all about relationship building. Um, mm-hmm. So then, I mean, I was very similar to you in the beginning in, in the sense that I started with weddings and then I and then, you know, started doing more commercial corporate stuff. And mm-hmm. so in, from your standpoint, what are the differences of a wedding like how you approach it, what you have to deliver versus a commercial, you know, in your how how you get the project conceptualized and done, you know. Obviously, with the wedding, there's only so much really that you can that you can control. So I only really can plan so much for a wedding. Obviously, outside of me knowing all the details, like I make sure that I know where everyone's going to be at every minute of the day. Once I do that. A lot of it is kind of just going with what's happening. Right. Uh, the only things, the only things that I really try to take control of are um, the speeches. Things that are really important for me in the film are like the speeches, ceremony pieces, different things like that. But even that, I can only control so much. I can't change the venue. I can't change the entire lighting in the entire place. But I can do certain things or ask certain things. Um, where commercial, it's different because commercial, I can kind of, I can set up anything I want. If they hire me for a job, I can decide where it is, what the lighting is, who's there. I can make them redo takes. So it's like a non-disrespect to the people that do a lot of commercial work. But when I do commercial work now compared to weddings, it just seems so like stress-free because (laughs) because I get to, if I don't like a take, I just do it again. And if I don't like the way this is lit, I just move them. (laughs) Weddings are kind of just you can control as much as you can until it actually happens, not the way you planned, and there's nothing you can do about it. That's the wedding. That's, <laughs> that's the wedding business. That's so true, man. I got burned out on wedding. I did it for like four or five years before mm-hmm. I kind of tapped out, and uh, uh, it's because the other part of the of it that's stressful is it's always the most important day of that person's life or that couple's uh-huh. life. So you get the mm-hmm. same level of intensity every single time you have a wedding, but the end product it becomes very similar after a certain point once you've really mastered it. And it's like, you're, it's not going to be that different. One person's to the next, other than the details of what happened in their wedding, but you don't get to do like some random thing where zombies appear all of a sudden and they have to like, you know, in the middle of the wedding, it turns into a movie. Um, right. <laughs> but anyway, so, um, what, is, what about your workflow on YouTube? That's really fascinating to me that you're, doing all this work, you have a family, and yet you're also, I mean, the reason why I know I'm supposed to do it, and, and, I, and I'm kind of making a commitment to start, but mm-hmm. I realize the reason why I haven't is because I know how much time it really goes into it. And I'm like, dude, mm-hmm. I'm like freaking exhausted every day. So how are you uh-huh. balancing that? And what do you how do you work it into your daily life? 
Um, so I wake up every day at four. Th- I'll show you my. Do, do you show the video of this on yeah. this podcast uh-huh. too? Okay. Well, this alarm that you see in the very top oh every gosh. single day at four thirty-eight a.m. <laughs> is when I wake up. Yeah. So. Every single day I wake up at 4.38 in the morning, and by the time I get coffee, it'll be just before 5. I edit every YouTube video from 5 to 7.30 in the morning, and then my kids wake up at 7, and I spend time with my kids from like 7 to 9. Then I usually work 9 to 5-ish for the Mm -hmm. most part, unless I have – if I'm in the office. If I obviously have a job that I'm not home, then it's different. Right. Um, Then I always spend time with them before they go to bed from 5 to 7-ish, and then a couple of nights a week I will work – once again from maybe nine or whatever to midnight and then I record would go I start over so Dang. YouTube I mean YouTube is a thing you have to you know the reasoning you said of just not having enough time is it's not not necessarily I'm not saying it's an excuse to you but it's an excuse that everybody uses is sure. just time sure. if you want to Without question, if you want to produce a lot of content on YouTube or on whatever, it is going to take time. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Where do you stick it? (laughs) Yeah. And that's – you just really have to decide and it takes – you know, it takes me sacrificing that I will sleep two and a half hours less each day to get the edits done. And then obviously during the day I'm recording at all times. Um, I always am bringing my camera around with me. It really depends obviously what you're going after for in YouTube. Um, I don't – I'm doing much more of kind of documenting what I'm doing Mm -hmm. than trying to come up with a film each day. Um, Right, right. I wouldn't do that. Trying to take you along. (laughs) I don't have time for that. (laughs) Um, And you know, yeah, if I did that, it would be even more time. But I mean, I probably spend you know one to two hours a day filming Mm. randomly. If you count all the times I hit record and talk into it, whatever it is. But it is a commitment. I mean, it's twenty. It's twenty extra hours a week that I could do a lot of things with. And then that's not counting, obviously, the podcasts. Right. And that's not counting trying to obviously run the business, which is ultimately the most important because I don't do YouTube for money. Yeah. Um, I just do it because I enjoy it. Yeah. Obviously, there's some money coming in from it now, but that's yeah. not at all why it I started. It can't be your primary motivating factor no. when you're starting because that's, no, if you that's start a long, hard road for that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's not at all a reason that I do it whatsoever. Um, it's yeah. just... But yeah, too many people I think go into it right away with, I want to do YouTube so I can make money. And then they realize how hard it is to actually get to a thousand subscribers or a hundred subscribers and then they quit. And so what I love about doing tons of YouTube videos is that 99% of people quit after they start. Like so therefore, you're going to stand out just because you're still there. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. I love that. Yep. Um, so then what what is your preferred setup in that situation? You just have your DSLR and like uh, the in-camera mic, like a road mic or something like that? Or do you For the YouTube stuff it? you're talking about? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For YouTube stuff specifically, my setup is this right here. It's uh-huh. a road mic, a, G- a GH5 yeah. with a road mic on top of it. Yeah. That's like just my everyday carry around with yeah. me um it's very rare that i'll do anything other than that in terms of like putting labs on me or whatever the only time i'll ever do that is if for some reason i was recording Far some away. sort of speaking thing or whatever yeah, yeah. Um, but for the most part that's just what i use um there's obviously only a certain level of per- like perfection in terms of quality for that sure. i go after in vlogs yeah. Yeah. i obviously I'll do some some light corrections. I do fix audio for all my vlogs and making sure that the levels stay consistent because audio is huge for me. Mm-hmm. But you only can go so crazy. If you go if you go too nuts with a vlog type style video, you'll quit really quickly because it's just you can't add even more work to it if that's not something that you're actually doing as your full time business. All right. Um, so that's kind of a tough thing though. When you are someone that does video for a living, it's hard to tell yourself. YouTube is a bit of a separation for me of of what I'm putting out there compared to the quality that I would if I actually spent double the time doing it. You have to be okay with understanding it's more about the content that is in that, in my type of thing at least. Sure. Because I'm not doing what's supposed to be a cinematic YouTube channel or anything. The idea for me is I'd rather you hear what I say good and make that be the important thing rather than me caring if – the white balance was a tiny bit right, off right, or the right. lighting was educational. Perfect. Yeah. Yes. So then, um, do you ever have uh, clients that, cause I noticed you do talk about your real daily life mm-hmm. stuff. Do you ever have clients that are like, Oh, I just saw that. That's interesting. I didn't know this conversation was difficult. <laughs> yep. Yeah. They, I mean, I literally, and people don't realize like one of, one of my biggest marketing tools to get work is that I put videos out on YouTube all the time. Mm-hmm. 
people don't realize that it's not just about the income from YouTube as much as it's about building a brand, brand that you yeah. show up constantly as a person that's into video. Mm -hmm. So, so a lot of my clients watch my vlogs and I'm not really cons number one. I don't really, I don't take on clients that I don't have good relationships with in the first place. So I'm always completely okay with talking about like an experience I had or whatever. And because a lot of my content is educational, it's a lot of my content isn't really about like the client, mm -hmm. but the conversation might be about how I came about that client or got that client, mm -hmm. which I'm completely okay with them seeing a vlog that says, Hey, for the last three months, I've been, you know, interacting with this person and I eventually got this work after seeing a need for that. I I'm okay if they see that because they understand that like I'm in a business too, trying to get sure. work. So if they say, wow, that's why he was talking to me for five, six months, really friendly. <laughs> that's just, that's just a good marketing strategy. And it's just part of life. <laughs> yeah. And so, so I'm not, I'm not, a, you know, afraid of them seeing it and being like, oh, he is going to talk poorly about me or because that's my content is never about like the mm -hmm. client. It's more about I'm showing you my setup, how I filmed this, how I filmed that. Mm. Great. And then um, what kind of projects are exciting you right now? That's, uh, man, that's kind of what I'm in the midst of right now is really figuring out what I actually like to do the most. Yeah. Um, ever since going full time and going away from doing just weddings, I've done everything from, you know, real estate videos to commercial video to aerial projects to audio only projects. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff that I really enjoy doing. And right now I'm really kind of tr really trying to figure out like what what do I really want to be known for? What do I love to do? Right. Um, That's key. I love telling like, and, and as cheesy as, cause everyone says they love telling stories. I literally like, like that is my favorite thing to do. Mm -hmm. What I'm most passionate about, the reason I love weddings is being able to somehow tell their story is huge for me, but also why I love documentary filmmaking more than anything. Mm. Like I would love 10 years from now to have a full length 90 minute documentary on something oh, nice. just because I love, I love, I love people's story of how they got to where they're at today. Like, I think it would be cool to create a Netflix series or a Netflix wanting to be in business 10 years from now. It'll just be YouTube. So let's just say YouTube. Uh, um, I would just love though, to fired. have a whole series of, yeah, <laughs> I would just love to have a whole series of, oh, I just think that, you know, 10 years, five, 10 years from now, you're not going to need a Netflix because people can just get right to the consumer. It's just, I think it's just where things are going. Mm. But I just love stories. So like anything that if even if it's a, just a small business, but I love what their owner stands for, or how they started their company. Those are the things that actually excite me the most because it's it's man, I really want to get to the heart of why you are in business. Everyone's in business for a reason. It's not always they don't usually start just because they say that business can make a million dollars. They start because they like something. Mm -hmm. Then they start to make money with it. Maybe their motives change. But I do think that everyone has a reason that they do what they do, and I love that story. Awesome. Uh, so then, you know, that I was going to ask you next, how do you want to be known? But I mean, how? So how are you known right now? What is your brand, and what what do people say about your work? You know, in terms of what we're known for, I mean, we're right now we're probably known more for weddings than anything, mm -hmm. um, because we've done that the longest. Mm -hmm. Um, I think we're starting to do a lot more commercial work, but really not yet defining what we what is really a com commercial overall is a massive term. Yeah. So so what that looks like in terms of what we really want to be known for, that's kind of still what we're dialing in. Um, we really love aerial stuff a lot um, just because it's we think that there's beauty and not just the everyday drone shot in a wedding, but more to it than that. Um, but. To be honest, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I think what we really want to be known for is just that regardless of what you hire us for, mm -hmm. we're a company that you're really going to like to work with. Um, we really take pride in asking more questions than we just give solutions to because I think too many people in video go into a project with kind of here's what I want to do, 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 and they forget like what is your actual customer's goal? Who is actually their target market? Because if you don't help them find what they're actually trying to do, your videos aren't going to be successful and they're not going to hire you again. Right. So I really want to be known for someone that just listens, that tries to solve the problem that they're actually trying to solve 
by using video instead of just saying, oh, I'm this really good cinematographer and I'll just make something look pretty and it will just do its job. <laughs> so in terms of what specific project products those are, uh, we'll figure You'll that figure out. You'll figure that out. Exactly. Going. You just got to keep developing. <laughs> yeah. So then wh- yeah. how did you make the jump to – how did you know it was time to make the jump to full time? And I'm assuming you had a family already and, and or did that come while you, after or what was that like? Um, you cut out the beginning. Oh, of that, the sorry, jump to full time. Oh yeah, yeah. So, so before then, I mean, I for the last well, for the last three years before I went full time into Four LC Studios, I was actually a worship leader for a church. So I was worship leader slash video producer. So I did all the internal videos for the church, and then I also did music. Um, so I was already kind of doing what I knew I was going to do when I was not full time. It just was in a different capacity. Um, and then before that, I was playing music full time for 10 years. So the the journey leading up to going full time was while I worked a full time job, 40 hours a week at a church, I would spend probably an additional 40 hours a week building 4LC Studios for two years. So I was building all the weddings. I was building the business so that when I eventually decided I was going to go full time, I knew that I had work. It, I didn't kind of go full time and say, OK, well, here goes nothing. Let's see if anything happens. I made sure I actually had work set out. The one beauty of weddings is obviously you can kind of plan out that you know how much money you're going to make at, as a rough estimate because you have weddings already booked. Um, but I spent a ton of time. I, I would work nine to five at the church and I would come home and work from five thirty to because this is before I had kids. I would work from 6 to 10, 11 at night, every night, just trying to build what I was doing. Um, and at that time, I wasn't doing anything with YouTube or anything, so it was just just the weddings. But it takes work. That, that shift from wanting to go full-time takes a lot of work <sighs> because it's one thing when it's part-time and all the money is just like, well, this is bonus money. It's another thing when you make this your only income, you better be – prepared for that (laughs) that's a whole different story what is the one thing that you're always stressed or worried about or focused on uh when it comes to that um for me it's like i always have to be finding new customers and clients and making sure people pay me on time (laughs) you know my my answer honestly like i think this is just how i've always been like i i'm not a person that really worries about things Mm. um i I've just always been that way. I kind of, I'm, I just, I don't really worry. I mean, I feel like I just, as long as I work hard and I always work hard and I always do my best to make sure that the customer that does pay me loves the work to pay me more mm-hmm. after that mm-hmm. is the key. Yeah. I think too many times the issue is everyone works so hard on getting the next mm-hmm. customer. They don't remember that most of all your money can come from the same client. And this is more yeah. in commercial work than it is weddings. Weddings yes, obviously yes. Is more of one Referrals. transaction. Yeah. But but your clients, the the easiest way if I if I gave you if I said go ask your best friend for twenty dollars right now or go ask a stranger for twenty dollars, you'd probably rather go ask your best friend for twenty dollars. And yet so many people go after peop like brand new clients. That's their main strategy rather than how can I get my current client that already likes me and that has already paid me to hire me for more work. Um, yeah, that's so I think very that, true. So I think that that's really something that I go hard after is making an experience good enough with the client that the one that was really maybe hesitant about spending $3,000 for their first video into the next year now wants to spend 10 or 15 because they saw it be successful. Right. And yeah. it's much easier to get repeat clients than it is to get the same one. I mean, than to get a brand new one every single time. <laughs> That's what I'm always telling people. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's the best form of uh, income is repeat customers. Yep. Um, yep. Cool. So I, I want to be mindful of your time. I know we've got like five minutes left. So um, in terms of your content, what is what is the difference between like the, what you're doing on YouTube versus your podcast? So my content on YouTube, I the best way I describe it, and it comes straight from Gary Vee. I'm a humongous Gary Vee fan. Um, is literally more documenting this entire journey. Mm-hmm. And on YouTube is, yes, you're just going to see what I did each day. But what I'm going to try to do is when I 
go across different things. When I suddenly am, I don't, I don't think about anything I'm recording the day before. I do not plan my YouTube videos ever. Mm-hmm. I literally wake up, I start to film my day, and as I'm going through my day, if something comes about, if something from this podcast sparks, hmm, that would actually be valuable for the people that watch my content. That's what the 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 YouTube video for the day might turn into. Mm. So I really try to do it like that on YouTube where it's much more documenting what it looks like every day in this business. And then when I can pull out little nuggets that might be useful, then I make those maybe a little bit longer so that it's helpful. And that's kind of my approach. And the podcast approach is different because podcasts are unique because you get a long form content. So what I'll try to do with the podcast is definitely more think out what a podcast is going to be about. And I'll try to take things that are really um, maybe I'm seeing a lot of questions about, or maybe I'm really interested in hearing a longer in-depth conversation about somebody that's doing this or doing that. You can get, you know, hour long, two hour long podcasts if you really want, because people listen to those, they'll listen to those when they're doing other things. So my podcasts are more like a deep dive into what I talk about quickly in everyday YouTube vlogs and all that kind of stuff. That's kind of the best way to describe it. Great. That's awesome. And then, do you yeah, feel like yeah, it's been fun for uh, for us to just yeah. we just started recently? Um, what do you have you found that your YouTube or podcast has helped you uh, charge more for your work, or like has it increased your rate as your brand has grown, or how does that hundred percent? I mean, yeah. not necess- not even I wouldn't necessarily say yet charging more as much as it's easier for me to charge what I want to charge, mm. um, simply because the fact that more and more people see me doing it um, and see me that it that I don't feel like my rates are too high or too low in the first place. They're right now what I want to charge. It, it helps me just build a leverage of simply that I am doing it every day. When I'm talking to a company explaining how important it is for them to continually produce content for their own brand, it gives me a leverage when they can see that I'm doing it myself and that I understand the grind of putting out content all the time. So it absolutely has helped me. You know, I can't go into specifics in terms of the income for some of the things, but the work that I've gotten out of YouTube, not from like a monetization form, yeah, but, but actual clients work. that have hired me because they came across the YouTube channel mm-hmm. has been humongous for me. And Got it's it. literally the thing that nobody thinks about when they're creating content. <laughs> <laughs> so and, I mean and, and if you know how to go after that, it really is effective. I mean, can you give us a range of how much your commercial projects like start out at or what kind of what kind of yeah, where do you My, generally like to start? Well, the way that I do it is un- unlike unlike with weddings where I have kind of like packages right. set up. Yeah. My commercials are all over the place because it really, really depends on what they want to do. Yeah. The difference between a company saying we just want a one minute talking head video of us talking about this versus them saying we want to do a one minute video, but it's going to require 17 different days of filming. It's all over the map. Yeah. So like I literally don't even have a pricing sheet for commercial work. I literally go into a meeting. I figure out who they're going after, what the actual goal is for the video. Then I kind of reverse engineer and say, okay, for you to do that, I need to film this, 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 and this, which takes me X amount of days. It's going to take this, 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 and the editing gear, whatever it is. Then I kind of come up with a custom core. I literally don't do not have a package sheet. And the best recommendation I give to people in commercial work is to never throw out a price until you really get a feel for really what the project looks like. Got because it. because you could say I charge $2000 for a 30 second video. A 30 second video to one person could be four different countries of filming in their head. <laughs> compared to a 30 second video to someone else that's just oh we just want you to come here and film our CEO talking about how much how good business is. Right. So it's important to know what they actually think that time is or else you can end up losing a lot of money, which is not what you want to do. Yeah, that's cool. That's a great way to end. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you want to just get, tell people where they can follow you and how they can, you know, go along with you on your journey. Yeah, for sure. I mean, YouTube is just um, youtube.com slash Scott McKenna. Instagram is at Scott McKenna. Twitter is one of my favorite platforms. That's at Scott W. McKenna. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, I'm, I think I'm 
probably in all the different places. Most of the time it's at Scott McKenna, but Twitter for some reason someone has and I can't get it. <laughs> I think it's actually me that owns it, but I still can't remember what that is. <laughs> That's funny. So who knows? So Scott W. McKenna. But sure. if you just go to YouTube.com slash Scott McKenna, all the links to all those places are there too. So would love to connect with anyone listening. Great. And thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Appreciate it. And uh, take care. Sounds good. We'll chat again soon. All right. Cheers. All right. Bye-bye. <laughs>